Hello and welcome to today's video which is this one's quite an interesting one and one that I'm uh, it's sort of linked to our latest route report that we're giving away and uh, and our program uh, package that we've been putting together but this is a, a great article to ex ex explain the purpose of functional training and how it's how it's done and this is going to lead into a couple of other videos that will hopefully be a bit shorter all right so let's get into it so I don't ramble on too much all right so um, basically what what's the definition of functional training because the we, a lot of there's a lot of confusion as to what functional training really is so Wikipedia defines it as classification of an exercise which involves training the body for the activities performed in daily life so if you're a construction worker um, the activity here of pretty much like twisting and lunging and bending is like a, a, a an essential act, uh, movement that you need for just performing your job so if you have a problem in with any of these movement patterns then there's a chance of injury pain losing your job um, all those sorts of things so breaking up exercise programs based on body parts is sort of not going to help a person who needs this pattern of movement all right so basically functional training is something that replicates these these movements this is just one example all right so the words thrown around a lot but it's often abused and it's misunderstood what I often see confusion with is with integrated movements. Uh, I love integrated movements. I think they're great, especially in sports specific, awesome, but they're not necessarily functional. So for example, Olympic lifting is sports specific, but it's not functional. And no, unless you're a weightlifter, you're never really going to need to do that. Um, a, hang, a clean and jerk or a snatch even. You just never would do that. There's, it's just it's inefficient. All right, You want to try and find things that are that are if it's if you want it to be functional which is what we need to do for the everyday joe and the average person you need to have exercises that are much more similar to the timing and um, sequences of what you're going to need all right gymnastics another one i love gy gymnasts would be fantastic athletes of, of nearly anyone really because they need so many skills but they're not necessarily functional movement all right so Hope that explains the difference. These aren't necessarily functionally integrated and they're sports specific. All right, so um, so why do we need functional training? What, what's wrong with just training muscles like a bodybuilder, like a typical program, chest, back, quads, hamstrings? Um, well, basically, we don't move like robots. Um, we move with patterns of movement. Patterns are like a series of movements all linked together in a big chunk of information so so a squat for example is like one movement but tech really it's a pattern because it sort of links into many other things that coordinate arms with it um, the chunk of information is known as a motor program so it'd be like software on your computer and motor programs like many movements link many movements together all at once to complete the task so when you use functional training methods you're basically upgrading your software and, and, and making it become more efficient um, at, it's really the timing it's not so much the strength it's the timing of how things are done it's become uh, the place is less stress on things as the weaknesses are ironed out you know so tight things unstable things weak things all sort of start to tie together as they're supposed to and the pattern itself improves which improves many of those things all at once so that's why it's so important to become to use these because you can really save yourself a lot of time um, example what I mean by chunking is and why body part training just doesn't work is can you for example can you tell me which muscles and in which order that they would fire when you throw a ball like I don't know what that is because it'd be impossible to is it nearly everything's on the go like starting with you know all the muscles in your toes and your ankle would be sort of loading up first and then your all three quads hamstring glutes as you start to load up the leg to transfer and then it's twisting through the torso out through to the other leg when it steps forward and then the arm throws but the opposite arm doesn't have the ball also flies back to help with the rotation can you like pretty much every muscle in the body and it all happens in a split second and that's that's an example of a pattern of movement all right so if you once you start breaking that apart you start working like a robot and you disrupt the timing you disrupt the pattern which makes you inefficient which then puts stress on things that wouldn't have had there had that in the first place if you had it preserved and tried to improve the pattern 
All right, that's why it's so important, and that's how it prevents injury, but it improves performance if you're a sports person or even just want to be better at work or whatever it is you want to do. All right, so example of the chunking here, um, this would be very simple, um, breaking a, like a pattern into three different patterns. So you're going to really use the lunge first and then twisting second, with the third, the pushing part of the of the arm. So um, they're all three different movement patterns themselves, and these are what we would classify as the foundation ones. Um, but when they're layered upon themselves, they create a pattern uh, that you would use in everyday life. And throwing a tennis ball is the same thing as serving in tennis and the same thing as golf, and, um, like a golf swing. They all share the same timing. So can you see, like anything that shares that timing, if you improve it, it improves anything that looks like that or needs that. That's why it's so important to work with these foundation ones, um, the lunge, the twist, the bend, because they will improve anything that needs the timing in this. All right, um, which means you also improve the strength and power and other abilities that you may be missing. Um, so it's very important to address any fundamentals before going sport specific. So, so you know, before progressing to the advanced complex ones, that you know, you, you, anyone in good at sport would tell you the same thing. It's the it's doing the fundamentals really, really well that makes them like awesome it's not hitting the incredible down the line shot if they're a tennis player that makes them great it's the keeping the ball in play and you know um and just being good at all the simple things all right so all the all of the movements you make are made from foundation patterns um ignoring these foundations leads to compensation poor performance injury strength training without optimal patterns will create prime movers activity that sees no need for stabilizers um, that's a disaster, all right? So strength will rise, but your mo movement quality will most likely go down, all right? That's often what we see with, you know, people sort of just bypassing this using bodybuilding training all the time or or even even some of those, um, you know, clean and jerk type things and, you know, but not addressing their, their poor just foundation pattern. You know, like, sure, they might get stronger in the clean and jerk, but there's potential for injury somewhere else and the compensation will occur. All right, so benefits of strength training. So the strength increase, this is the fastest way to make someone stronger is just to make them move better. So I don't know anyone who doesn't want to be stronger. So, um, you know, and we, we've proven this with older adults, um, disabled people, and it's very much the same with anyone else. You, if you change multiple movements, you're changing muscles, abilities, patterns all at the same time. The transfer to sports is high because you basically need these patterns to be to play sports. So if you're improving them with your training, there's a huge transfer to it. Um, reduces injury risks, as we've spoken about, like by injury, pain, dysfunction, all will show compensatory movement, weakness, stiffness, lack of stability. Learning to move correctly improves all of these problems at the same time. Um, the last one, it's time efficient because the focus is more on quality than quantity. So you don't need to do this all the time to get great results. You just have to do it really well. That's the key to it. All right. So the key movement patterns are squat, bend, lunge, push, pull, twist, and gait. These are the success. Um, this is what your success of your programs are built on. So let's have a look at a couple of examples of each one. So how it relates to um, um, basically everyday movement. So you'd be a golf golfer, you know, learning to how to bend. This would be bolty bending. This would be learning how to bend correctly. This would be someone just bending over to pick up leaves in the garden. These, this particular movement is a lot of times where we see um, spinal problems, you know, herniated discs uh, occurring. Um, so the gym exercise, simple ones, and there's many of them. This would be just the Romanian deadlift, and this would be, say, a bent over row. Very, very similar, two different exercises though, but they share the same timing of learning how to bend using the hips and not bending in a poor method that creates spinal problem. All right, so it's everyday task, gym task. Lunging, we, well, we've seen already with the throw, and this one like is really three patterns at once. This could be shown in the twisting and the pushing as well. All right, so that that's sort of shares the same timing as this with both lunges. 
This one is lunging and bending over to pick up a ball. This is a, a drill we actually use with older adults. We call this the cone drill, where we place a tennis ball on top of a cone, and it, and it, this requires the if without the lunge, the, he's going to have to bend over very poorly and risk hurting his back. So this is what we see when you lose the lunge, you lose the ability to get up off the ground. So another example of that would be say the Turkish get up, and this is the last stage of the Turkish get up. Um, that you need the lunge. I, I, I dare you to try and get up off the ground without placing your hands on the floor. How get up on the ground from the floor, lying on your back without using a lunge? It's very, very difficult to do. All right, so it's so much easier to use a lunge, and and many of the people who can't do that, they can't get up off the floor. All right, so that's what happens when you lose it. So don't lose it. Um, squats. Well, anyone says they can't, the doctors told me I shouldn't do squats because it hurts my knees. Well, I'd love to see you sit down on a chair without doing that because that's pretty much the same thing. All right, so squatting is sitting on a chair. Running is basically a series of single leg squats. So if you can't do a single leg squat, you shouldn't be running. You Basically, if you're running and you're terrible at this, there's a chance you're just going to develop problems somewhere within your body, you know, knee, ankle, hip. You know, they're pretty much... Or, you know, any of the lower leg injuries from running are going to be a problem with a single leg squat. Um, jumping, by the way, is also made from squatting. So if you can't squat correctly, you can't jump correctly. All right, so you can see how this relates to sports as well. Um, examples of twisting. Um, basically, like like we saw with this construction workers, um, and this guy here, sweeping. Sweeping and twi is a twisting action. You know, so vacuuming your your floor in your house it's it's a form of twisting playing tennis obviously golf all those things highly rotational this might be the most important of them all um, really without it we become very robotic again we see with back pain a real issue with this one people have stiffened themselves up so much in fear of pain they've lost this ability which then uh, paradoxically sets them up for more pain um, so and you know to some of the most dumb exercises we see in the gym planks, which are t teaching people to stiffen themselves up even more, um, you know, sets them up for becoming less athletic like the tennis player. All right, so I don't know what's the purpose of that. It's not even, it's just muscle training that's got making people dumb. All right, so... Um, so twisting, this is be one of our next one, and then pushing. Well, here's an example of pushing a couch. You know, just something in the home um, is an example of the functional movement that links to that. Um, in sports orientated, pushing off like on from a tackle, um, you know, and then linking into a, a standing up exercise. So again, all of these movements are standing up, by the way. Um, using a single arm movement, pushing off in a squat stance, very similar to what you would see in a sports situation. All right, so. Um, again, if I was pushing a car or something like that, pushing a, something in the garden, you know, moving wheelbarrows even, it's, that's a pushing movement. So without it, you, you, it's your foundation. What's what you make things from. Pulling, uh, rock climbing, well, it's not necessarily an everyday task, but, you know, um, walking the dogs maybe. You know, and that's very similar to these. This is like a sled pull. Obviously, that's a lot heavier. But if you can handle something like that, walking the dogs is a piece of cake for you. Um, if I can do chin-ups, then rock climbing is easy for me. Climbing a tree, pulling something down. You know, like these are things that we take for granted. These are what we make. Anything that looks, that shares the timing. If there has, a, if the timing's been perfected in the gym, outside of the gym, it'll be done exactly that way because you've taught yourself how to do it. That's the purpose of functional training. All right. Um, last one is gait. This is one we take for granted, and I must admit, having worked with many people with um, MS, cerebral palsy, stroke, spinal cord injury, you know, the, the damage this does to these people psychologically as much as physically, and for something that we take for granted every day, you can't underestimate that. This one's probably the one of the trickiest ones to work with. It really does coordinate the upper body and lower body um, in a split second. Very difficult to do. And you see here, toddler, we, we all began this way. This is how we sort of learned how to do it first on our hands and knees. And that's what this exercise is mimicking this um, to then sort of progress into single leg stance and in all directions and coordination's huge with this one and then obviously to walking upstairs so you know um, the only way to improve this is via nervous system you can't just doing hip extensions won't make you walk better you know clams 
<laughs> Pilates exercises, you can train your abdominals as much as you want. It will make no difference to how you walk. I can tell you that now. The only way to get better at walking is learning how to crawl and learning how to walk um, using various things, often with single leg stance, and they're often hard to do, All right, and you will need assistance. So, um, yeah, so this gives you that's the seventh pattern of movement, all right? So, see all these your foundation patterns. You must have exercises within your program that has includes all of these, all right? So, so where do you start? Well, first thing you need to test yourself across all of these, find a weakness within each one, and devise a plan to correct it. So, if you've got a flexibility or mobility problem, then you start to correct it. However, having said that, you must always go back and integrate the new hardware into the software. So just stretching and devising and strengthening exercises on their own, but not integrating it back into the pattern of movement, you won't change anything. You need to retrain the brain to use this new information that you've just changed into this into the pattern that you had a weakness in. And you'll need to spend a lot of time doing that to make it new and automatic. Um, once you've done it, then, you know, great. You're, you're you're really on the well on the way to be able to do much more advanced and complicated things. All right, so um, to get a bit more detail on this, you can watch um, there's a, this video here, the our sports conditioning assessment video um, you know, on our YouTube channel. This gives you like the step by step on all of these patterns and even some of the sports ones. Um, or the free report, and I would encourage you to get this. This is coming out at the end of this month or probably in the next week or two. Um, this has all the pictures and instructions for each pattern, um, progressions and progressions of each one as well. So so if you find it easy, you can go harder. If it's too hard, you can go backward. All right, and soon we'll be releasing some extra videos on how to do that as well. So um, so help you to get, get in top shape and do everything the way that you're supposed to and move more efficiently.